So, you're in the midst of battle. One of the enemies rushes towards you and stabs you with its dagger. Then, you hear your DM tell you to make a constitution saving throw. It seems you may have just been poisoned. Wait, what? What's going on here? Well, fear not. On today's episode of Nat 1, we'll be taking a look at conditions. Hello everyone, I'm Crow of Murder 15. So, condition effects can come from a multitude of reasons, from class features, to spell effects, to even as something as simple as triggering a trap that your rogue was supposed to spot a minute ago! A creature can also have multiple conditions placed on it, which each condition will follow its own duration of time. However, if a creature is hit with the same condition, they don't stack as far as the ailment. They just follow their own duration of time as well. It can get a little confusing, so make sure to discuss with your DM when conditions are in effect. Now, let's take a look at these 15 different effects. Now, as a note before we begin, some conditions will have similar effects, so if any of this seems a bit repetitive, we apologize, but that's how it is. First, there's Blinded. A blinded creature can't see, has disadvantage on any attack rolls, and will automatically fail any checks that require the use of their eyes. Plus, any creature attacking a blinded creature get an advantage on their attack roll. Keep in mind, though, that the creature still can hear. Which leads us to our next condition, Deafened. A deafened creature can't hear and will automatically fail any checks involving hearing or listening. Next, we have Charmed. A charmed creature cannot attack the creature that caused the charm condition and cannot be targeted by any attack or spells that cause harm. As a word of caution, some creatures that can charm other creatures may have additional abilities they can inflict on you while you are charmed by them. <laughs> Suck you bite. Next, we have Frightened. A frightened creature will have disadvantage on any attack or ability check rolls while the creature that is frightening them is in their line of sight. In addition, the frightened creature cannot willingly move towards the creature that is causing their fear. I mean, it's not like you're going to go rushing forward into battle towards a scary looking goblin that's frightening you, right? Next, we have Grappled. A creature that is grappled has their movement speed reduced to zero and can't benefit from any speed bonuses. Now, the grapple condition will go away if the creature grappling you is incapacitated. Also, if there's something that causes the grappler to move, like from the effect of Thunder Wave, the condition is also dropped, seeing that the grappling creature is forced to move. After that is incapacitated. If a creature is incapacitated, that means they can't take any actions or reactions. This also includes movement. Basically, you really can't do anything while you're incapacitated. Also, a good portion of conditions will include incapacitated as a part of the condition, so keep that in mind. Now, for one of my personal favorites, Invisible. An invisible creature cannot be seen without the aid of magic or a special sense. For the purposes of hiding, an invisible creature is considered heavily obscure. Also, an invisible creature will have advantage on their attack rolls, and creatures attacking an invisible creature will have disadvantage. Just as a side note, even though you can't be seen while invisible, you can still be heard and leave tracks, so you're not completely undetectable. Next is Paralyzed. A paralyzed creature is incapacitated and cannot move or speak. All strength and dexterity saving throws will be an automatic failure. Creatures attacking a paralyzed creature will have advantage on their attack rolls, and if they're within melee range, the attack is an automatic critical hit. Next is Petrified. A petrified creature is transformed into an inanimate solid substance, usually stone along with any non-magical objects they are wearing or carrying. Their weight is increased by a factor of 10 and they cease aging. The creature is incapacitated, cannot move, speak, and are completely unaware of their surroundings. They automatically fail any strength or dexterity saving throws, and creatures attacking a petrified creature will have advantage, but the petrified creature will also have resistance to all attacks. Also, creatures that are petrified are immune to poison and diseases. However, if the creature that was petrified is already poisoned or has a disease in their system, it is just suspended for the duration of the petrification and is not neutralized. Next is Poisoned. 
probably one of the more common conditions. A creature that is poisoned has disadvantage on any attack or ability checks. A common misconception is poison also causes damage over time, but in D&D 5e, that's not the case. Next is prone. A prone creature is considered flat on the ground and their only movement option is to crawl, unless they use their full movement speed in order to stand up. A creature that is prone has disadvantage on their attack rolls, and creatures attacking a prone creature within melee reach gain advantage. However, anyone attacking a creature that is prone farther away than 5 feet will have disadvantage. Next is Restraint. Similar to Grappled, a creature that is restrained has its movement speed reduced to zero and cannot gain bonus to its speed. The restrained creature has disadvantage on its attack rolls and any creature attacking the restrained creature will have advantage. The restrained creature also has disadvantage on any dexterity saving throws. Next, we have Stunned, a personal favorite of the monk class to cause. A stunned creature is incapacitated, cannot move, and can speak, but only falteringly, meaning their speech would be slurred or hard to understand. A stunned creature also automatically fails any strength or dexterity saving throws, and any attacks on a stunned creature will have advantage. Next is unconscious, probably one of the more dangerous conditions. An unconscious creature is considered incapacitated, cannot move or speak, and is considered unaware of its surroundings. The creature also drops whatever item or items they're holding in their hands, fall prone, and will automatically fail any strength or dexterity saving throws. Attacks made on an unconscious creature will have advantage and will be considered a critical hit if the attack is in melee range. This is one situation you do not want to find yourself in. And finally, and honestly how I'm feeling right now, exhaustion. Exhaustion is a complicated beast, so bear with us on this one. Like most of these conditions, exhaustion can come from a multitude of reasons, from not taking rests, not eating or drinking, weather conditions, and much more. There are six levels of exhaustion, so let's go over them. At level one, you have disadvantage on your ability checks. Level two, your speed becomes halved. Level three, you have disadvantage on your attack and ability rolls. Level four, your maximum hit point total is halved. Level five, your speed is reduced to zero. And level six, well, you die. Now, the level conditions also stack, meaning if you're at level 3 exhaustion, you also suffer the level 1 and 2 conditions as well. Taking a long rest will only remove one level of exhaustion, provided your character has a good meal and drink to go along with it. Also, if your character is dead and someone casts Raise Dead on you, your level of exhaustion is reduced by one as well. Yes, even in death, you're still tired. Whew! Okay, so I know that was a ton of conditions to go over, so if you're still confused on any of these conditions on how they work, check page 290 in the Player's Handbook. That does it for today's episode, so join us next time as we talk about death saves. Until then, don't wear yourself out too much. See you next time.